Hello and welcome this time to a quick start guide for Axipelago in the early access version. So Axipelago is actually out to uh, be available as early access version where you can just uh, play the game uh, in a pretty good state actually, I hope so. So, uh, well, it does lack a little bit of user support or user initial user support, so you're not really sure what to do at the beginning. So I make up this guide here to actually guide you through the first steps and serving as some sort of, of spoken tutorial for you guys. So the first thing you want to do when you start up the game is check out if your user interface looks the way you want it to. So this is currently recorded on a 4K screen, so we have the biggest user interface setting. To change this, you click over there in the settings and the top buttons up here will actually be able to, will, will allow you to actually change the size of a user interface. So if you find the buttons to be too big, you just make them smaller or medium. I recommend normally medium should be fine, but if you find your user controls to be too small, just make them big. So whenever you change a setting in this dialog, please make sure that you restart the game afterwards. There could be some glitches otherwise, and you do not want to have that. So just a little restart, just takes a little couple seconds, no much loading times in this game. So yeah, that's a recommendation. If you change something in here, just restart, okay? All right, so the next thing you actually want to do, you're ready to play, and there we go. We actually click on new game, and we get to the game creation editor uh, screen, create new world. That's what we do here. You actually give a name to your new world. This is optional, but you can do uh, give them some fancy name in here. And then we have the world seed. So each island or each world actually depends on a seed it is created with. So if you write down your seed there, you will be able to recreate the same island with the same um, attributes all over again, okay? So you can give this to your friends and they will be able to play on the same island as you do, and that's pretty cool. So if you're not very satisfied with your element, this looks, this looks actually pretty cool. I would actually play this, but you can press this button over there, which will give you another random seed, and you can cycle to different sorts of islands to play with. So if you find something which looks interesting to you, just keep clicking the button until you find something you want to play. We will take just this. So the next is the world size. And the world size actually depends, um, well, a little bit on your capabilities of your system. It is really recommended to not go over five or four at this point. You will get a warning over there telling you that the bigger the island is, the more taxing it will be on the GPU, okay? So if you experience low frame rate, I would recommend turning down um, the, the island size, okay? So recommend, but normally if you go, the maximum is actually size 10. Look at this, this, this is giant. And if you play for several weeks in a row, your whole village will most likely not exceed over that part. So you don't really need a size 10 item, but if you want, it's there, it's open for you. And I don't know if this will be available at that size in the release version, but during early access, it's just open. And if you demand it even bigger, that's possible. I can allow even bigger items, but I don't think it's really needed. So it, it really just slows down the whole game. So we keep this to, yeah, let's keep it a free. And then the next is the starting villages. So you can decide with how many villages you want to start your game. So normally it's default set to one villager because that's the most easy because you're starting out with nothing. So you start there with a villager and you need to collect, collect some food, make some shelter uh, before the first day is over. And this is much easier with one villager uh, instead of five because five would need five times the amount of food and there is not a lot when you start out. So we're starting here with one villager and the next point in here, you can start a tutorial. That's really just a very brief tutorial giving you a basic insight in the controls of the game. Feel free to do that. We are not doing that like here because it's the guide. I'm, I'm here for your personal tutorial giver. So we start the game. Loading times are pretty fast here because that's a small island. Yeah. So the game controls actually, if you want to move around, you just use the WASD keys on your keyboard to move your camera around and you can press the Q and E button to rotate. Or you can move the, move, use the mouse and you hold down the right mouse button You can and move the mouse, you can actually move your camera and if you hold down the middle mouse button, you can rotate the view and with the mouse wheel, you can zoom. So that's basically the camera controls. There's a little bit more um, tools for that, but I think it's it's out of the scope of this simple guide, which should be just kept simple and fast. And I immediately pressed spacebar because spacebar will pause the game. 
And if you don't want to use the spacebar, you can actually over there in the bottom right, you see the speed settings of the game, which is currently paused. You can have a normal speed, double speed, and you have super speed when everyone is sleeping. So when every villager is actually in the bed, you can actually speed up the time significantly to go over the night. So in case you don't have any night shifts, that's a basic approach to actually go over the night pretty fast. So talking about night shifts, we go over to the upper uh, buttons up there in top right. The first one is actually the population window, which will allow you to, to set the allowed tasks for every villager. So normally you would have, over time, you would have more villagers and you can assign them to different tasks to get all a little bit more efficient. So currently we only have Zachary there and Zachary is, uh, yeah, he needs to just do everything because he's the only guy in there. Okay, the next tab in this window is actually the schedule tab. And with the schedule tab, you can define when the villagers shall go to sleep and when they shall to go to work and when they shall to have the free time. Uh, currently free time is not in this XI version. That just does nothing. Those both are the same, but they will have a, um, a distinct um, meaning later on. But for now we just have work and sleep and this is set right now that they will go to sleep at 10 p.m. and they will wake up, uh, will wake up at 6 a.m. They're still dark, the sun rises at 9 a.m. and the sun goes down, I don't know exactly, I think at 20. So that's uh, not really accurate right now, we do have pretty long nights. This will change at, um, at a later stage, but for now it's just how it is and you have to live with that. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Okay, so, and the next window is actually the inventory window. So we do have here the whole stock we have in our world. Currently we do not have any stock. We do have zero stones, we have zero stone blocks, we have no furniture at all. Um, yeah, well, we have nothing, so we need to collect something. So let's head over to the toolbar. The toolbar is in the top, the bottom left over there, and you can do several stuff here. For example, you can issue digging orders. I don't even know where the village is. So if you if you find uh, need to find a villager, you go to the population window and just click on your villager, and then you get the villager window. And if you double click his icon, you will actually be transported to where he is. So there's Zachary. He's standing there. Yeah, he looks quite funny. He, I think he's happy. So he's a happy guy. So there's our Zachary, and now we need to issue some orders for Zachary. So why not just dig away some stuff? Let's dig away this block. Here we go. There he comes. We issued him to dig this block, and that's what he does. Here we go. Pretty nice. And the next thing we actually could do, if we hold down the mouse button and move the mouse, we can select an area to do... Uh, to apply that this tool to. So we're now having digging for all this. And another thing we can do, if we are in the tool, um, we have the tool selected, we can actually press the plus and minus button. I'm using those on the numpad to actually get a vertical um, displacement as well. So we can actually do in 3D, okay? So remember that plus minus will actually move up your selection range. And there will, you can actually also dig tunnels. Speaking of tunnels, be aware that each villager needs a high of two blocks. So he cannot go and crumble into a one single high block. He needs two blocks clearance to actually go anywhere. And this is where it comes handy. If you're digging tunnels, you are basically using your range extender vertically to dig tunnels directly in two or three or whatever you want. A high of blocks, okay? That's for the digging. Uh, yeah, okay. If you have the tool selected there, and you want to get rid of it to deselect the tool, you can either use the button over there or press the escape key or just click the right mouse button, it will deselect the current tool. Talking about tools, we can also, when we dig terrain, we can also build terrain. So we currently have digged the dirt over there, so we do get some dirt material. So if we look over there in the inventory now and go to material soil, we do have dirt, we do have two dirts available for doing something with. And what we can do with dirt, we can actually build dirt blocks. So why not build the dirt block and build it over there. Let's build two dirt blocks. So I use the tool, building the dirt block. I can actually choose different shapes of this block. So we do not have only cubes. We also have ramps and corner pieces and triangles and all these certain, this is a stair over there. And we can also replace things. So if we wanna just uh, replace the material of a block, we would use the replace function of the block building. But there we go. He takes the dirt and builds the block. And he would do this as long as he has dirt available. So if he's run out of dirt, he will not build the block, obviously, because he needs some dirt first. 
Next tools in the row are actually agricultural tools. So there we have the first off is actually chopping trees. So we have a chopping tree tool. Again, we can just zone an area with that as we did with the digging tool to mark the tree to get chopped. Okay, we have, he's still doing things. Over there we have cancel orders where we can uh, cancel the orders we already issued and don't want to be made. So now we have cut the tree down and we do get some wood logs. We will go to the wood logs a little bit later, but for now, just be aware, when you fell a tree down, you get wood logs. And these wood logs actually correspond to the tree you just chopped. So each tree will have different types of logs and will result in different types of items made out of those logs. We'll see that later, but we just proceed here with the harvest and forage tool. So harvest and forage will actually be either harvesting plants or foraging stuff which is lying around. So we can actually harvest this bush and we can also harvest these stone blocks. So we just select the tool and click on it. Again, we can use areas again. And the villager will do the task once they are free to work. And there you go. He just harvested the bush. And we did get some twigs. And now with the twigs, we could actually build a bush twig bed. Look at that. That's nice. The next thing we can actually do is cut plant. Okay, to cut the plant, why would you cut the plant when the bush is actually just killed? Anyway, uh, you do have some different bushes over there. And over there we have a berry bush. So if we click harvest on the berry bush, the villager will actually go there and harvest the berries and not cut the bush because the bush will just regrow new berries. You can harvest later on when they have regrown to get supply of food. But berries are not very nutritious, so you cannot just rely on berries. So now, if you want to get rid of the bush, you can use the cut plant tool. So this will get actually get rid of the bush. There we go, it's gone. And the berries are still there, we just harvested. So why is all this stuff just lying around there, you ask? Because we, yeah, okay, let's go over there. We have a plant thing. You can just plant things. Okay, you can just plant anything. You can just plant trees, plants, all sorts of stuff. Just use it and plant the thing. So let's, let's put a berry bush up there. So he's going there and planting a bush. There he comes. Here we go. And there we go. And he planted the bush. So the bush will now go grow until it grows berries. And we can also harvest the wheat over there. That's wild wheat. So we have some wheat available. Here we go. We get just harvested some wheat. Okay, so now what to do with all this stuff? How did you automation? And okay, now we come to automation because there's two concepts here. One concept we just made here is direct orders to villagers to do stuff like digging, placing blocks or doing all the sort which you have to want, no, you want to control directly or harvesting things. But then we come to automation and for automation, we need these designate area or actually putting down zones. And we have a different sort of zones. The red button is here to remove a zone and we start off with a stockpile. So we just, as we did with every other tool, we can just click and hold the button and zone an area like this. Now we have a stockpile. If we want to extend the stockpile, which we start clicking in the stockpile itself and just zoning further so the stockpile is actually growing bigger. So now what we can do with the stockpile, a stockpile is there to actually stockpile things. Okay, that's that's the thing. Uh, we just, we have any tools deselected, just click the right mouse button to deselect any tool, click the zone, we get on the zone configuration window and this will allow you for the stockpile to to define what materials are going to be stored in there. So for example, if you just want to store raw stone, we are activating this. And what's happened now is the villagers will now actually collect all the raw stone and bring the raw stone into this stockpile. Okay, so as long as there's stone, they will be collected over there. And now he's busy doing that stuff. You can also see regrowing the grass on these dirt blocks we just placed, that's nice. And we have more zones, we have also a farm. So again, these zones are there for automation. So if you want to have an automated farm, we just make a farm zone. And again, if we click the farm, we can now define what crop should be used on this farm. So we haven't select anything, so he's just tilling the farm. And then this farm is just, yeah, idle. There's nothing because there's nothing ordered to do there. So when we set this to wheat, so he's going away, but now we set it to wheat and now he's planting wheat. There we go, he plants wheat, and when the wheat has grown up and is ready to harvest, some villager will come there and harvest the wheat and replant new wheat for the next cycle. That's what farm's for. And then we have the workshops. We have a wood workshop, a stone workshop, and a kitchen workshop. 
So these workshops basically act the same. So we can just place a wood workshop to show how this is going to work. So now we have a wood workshop. What can we do in a wood workshop? Oh, we could actually build planks. But for the planks, we would need one birch because we only have birch logs right now. So if we have different sorts of logs, we would get more options here to build planks out of. So we just select the birch lock and we want to keep it on stock. So this means if I set this to, I don't know, three, let's set it to six, that means that now the, this, uh, this workshop, this single workshop over there, will care for building planks until the stock has reached six, okay? But he's not doing nothing. But why is he not doing anything? Look at him, he's not doing anything. So we need a tool. And that's honestly just a problem in the game. It does not tell you what you need to build the planks. So normally you would go over there and we jump right over to the next, to, to the next point here, constructing stuff. So with constructing stuff, you actually tell the game or the villagers where you want to have things like furniture or tools. And to make the planks, we go over there in the tools section and build the sawbuck. It's not described anywhere, just so you know, you need to build the sawbuck. Okay, so to s let's see what there. Tools, sawbuck, you actually see it needs one log. So we can make a birch sawbuck. If we would have more types of logs, we would could build a sawbuck from a different type of log. So that's the same, but we can just say this one and give me just any sawbuck with whatever log is available. So what the villager does now is he's going to pick up a log from over there. And he built the sawbuck. So now as we have the sawbuck built, this order can now actually be started. So he starts now building planks, okay? Here we go, he's building the planks. There we go, we have now three planks made. So this sawbuck is not actually blocked because there's items on it and it cannot be further used. So how get rid of these planks? We go to the stockpile and actually allow the planks to be stored in there. So when we do this, the villager will actually go pick up the planks over there and bring them to the stockpile. Here we go. He's collecting all the planks. And once he has freed up the sawbuck again, he will start over with making more planks because we set it to make six, uh, keep the stock on six items. So he keeps just producing planks until uh, this constraint is reached. And there we go, we have six planks now. What we can do with planks, and we just keep over there in the construct stuff pad, because we do have, uh, reaching night at some point, we do want to have some light things. So let's go into lights, and there's a torch pole. So we can now build the torch pole because it needs uh, planks. So let's put down, so we just click here. Oh, of course, if you need to rotate anything, just press the R key. This is true for blocks, and it's also true for items, which you won't see right now because this is not making any difference. But we can now issue the torch poles. So, and the villager is now actually going to build these torch poles with a plank he finds somewhere. There we go, we now have light. So it could be when it's going dark, we still have this puddle of light up there. And as we just uh, used up some planks, he's going to produce new ones to keep the constraint on having six planks in the stock. So the next thing you actually want to do is you need another tool which is over there, you always need a workbench. So whenever you make some sort of workshop, always put a workbench in there because it's most likely that you will need it. So we go there and build a workbench. The workbench actually needs one rock. There we go. He's bringing the stone and now we have a workbench. And with the workbench in place, and we do have planks made, we now can make furniture, like for example, a bed. So let's make a bed. We can select uh, which plank to use, but currently we only have birch planks, so we have nothing to select here. We can craft it once or we can set this again, keep in stock. So let's set it to keep in stock. That will mean that the villager actually will build beds uh, as long as you don't have this one uh, bed in the stock. So here we go. He decided to do the planks first, that's okay. That's totally okay. Here we go, and he's now finishing the bed off. There we go, we now have a bed. So this bed is actually not an item, it's just to, to be carried around. It's, it's uh, a resource we can use. We can actually allow furniture in here. So the bed should be carried to the stockpile. So you can see more directly what it's used for. There we go, we carry the bed over there, it's now in the stockpile. So we can use that. 
And to use the bed, or where should you actually use the bed? We go over there to zones, and there is a dormitory. So we just make a dormitory. Let's do a dormitory over there. And whatever you need in a dormitory, you can click it, you get some information. You want to have a bed in there. So we got to using a bed, putting the bed in there. So now we issued the order to put a bed in there. And we already have a bed in our stockpile. So he's going to pick up the bed and bring the bed to the dormitory and it gets constructed in there. So now it's actually a bed which can be used. And we can also dismantle the bed. When we dismantle the bed... Does this not work? Come on. Okay, it's not working. But yeah, normally you can just dismantle things and he will just carry it away again. Oh yeah, there it does. There you go, he dismantles the bed and it's brought back again and we can place it somewhere else. So let's place the bed again. So now we have two beds, I think. Yeah, there we go, two beds. Oh, there's a glitch. So now we have two beds, one still in the stockpile, and we placed one. So this will be used to go to sleep. So when it's time to go to sleep, like in the scheduler it said, the villager will actually go to find a free bed and use that to sleep. If there's no bed available, the villager will not go to sleep. So always care for enough beds for your villagers. Okay, so basically the kitchen and the stone workshop um, basically works the same with one difference. The kitchen also needs a stone oven you will able to build uh, once you have stone blocks. So be aware to make stone workshop as well and the kitchen as well to make food and stuff. But it basically works all the same. And just to show you this thing again again, if you want to have the bed, to rotate it, press the R key. The R key will actually rotate items. I think that's basically it. That's the basic concepts of the game. I hope I have transported everything you needed to start right over with your game and build your own village. So what you first want to do is actually keep <coughs> make up some food chain so you can actually supply your villagers with food because that's what they will need most importantly. And the second thing you want to have is beds and basic shelter. And you can also do a dining room. So the dining room actually is when they taking up food and eating it, they have a, a dining room with tables and chairs in them, they will use that. It doesn't make it much of a difference right now, but will do in a later stage of development. Okay, so I think there's nothing much to say about this. This is just a quick start guide and it already went pretty long. I didn't want you to have that long, but I wish you a lot of fun with the game. And if you have any questions, leave a comment, uh, just subscribe, whatever, I'm over there. You can join the Discord, you can join the Steam Community discussions, you can join the official community forums, and you can join just everywhere where you found something about the game. I will listen to you, the community will shape this game. So, have fun, have a nice day, and keep playing.